Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to share with you guys the process how I created a color wheel. The color wheel has been existing for centuries. It shows the color relationships in a wheel shape. I think the best way to understand a color wheel is to make one for yourself. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have known that I haven't been doing much art in the last two years. Since I'm going back to watercolor painting, I think making a color wheel would be a perfect warm-up exercise for me. Some tools you need for making color wheel include a ruler, a pencil, an eraser, a compass, a protractor, some watercolor paper, primary pigments, palette, watercolor brushes, and some water for cleaning the brushes. So when you have everything ready, let's get started. First, use your compass to draw a circle on the paper. Then use your ruler, pencil, and protractor to carefully divide the circle into 12 parts. using a very thin type of masking tape to tape over these pencil lines. So these white strips will later serve as blockers on paper to prevent the pigments from flowing into its neighboring parts. The other reason why I like using this trick is when your watercolor brush goes over the pencil lines, it would likely bring in the pencil lead residues into the color mixture you paint with. When painting a color wheel, you want the color on the wheel to look as pure as possible when you reference to it. So this tape would serve as a screen in between the watercolor brush and the pencil lines. So the next step is to fill the color wheel using the three primary colors first. The three primary colors are yellow, red, and blue. So in traditional watercolor paintings, people would use cadmium yellow, cadmium red, ultramarine as the primary colors. Here I'm actually using Windsor and Newton gouache pigments. The color that I'm using are primary red, primary yellow, and primary blue. Unfortunately, my camera was running out of battery, so I am not able to share with you how I painted this color wheel from the beginning. Just to share with you a couple of notes, when you paint this color wheel, yellow should always go to the top. Um, at the bottom, primary red should always go to the left side uh, with the primary blue positioned on the right side. The space in between uh, these colors should always be three segments. So the next step would be to mix and paint in the secondary colors. A secondary color would be the mixture of two different primary colors of same amounts. In the color wheel, it should go into the second segments clockwise from the yellow or counterclockwise from blue. In the same way, you can get the other two secondary colors, orange and violet. So the last step is to mix and paint the tertiary colors into the color wheel. There are six of these colors, yellow green, blue green, blue violet, red violet, red orange, and yellow orange. As you see from the video, the two colors that I'm finishing here is blue-green and yellow-green. So when you finish the color wheel, it might look very different from the commercialized standard color wheel, which is very normal. Each pigments from different company, they behave differently. That's why we need to spend some time playing with them and really understand their properties. More importantly, by using this color wheel, 
we're gonna know the relationships between different colors, things like what are considered as complementary colors, what are analogous colors, how to develop a harmonious color scheme. The color wheel also comes in handy when analyzing other people's work. Let's say if you see a very beautiful, stunning painting and you want to understand how the color scheme was developed by this artist, um, the first thing you want to do is take out the color wheel and try to locate all the colors that have been used in this painting. So by doing more and more of this type of exercise, gradually you will uh, develop a very good sense of using colors and eventually will have your own style. I'll talk more about color theory in upcoming videos and also share with you guys some of the lessons that I've learned throughout the years. For my YouTube channel, I plan to upload some art tutorials as well as some um, time-lapse videos of me making art. If you enjoy what you have seen so far, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram. So we're about to finish this color wheel here. When we finish filling all the colors, we're gonna let it sit there and dry. When all the colors are dry, we are about to remove the masking tapes from the paper. The paper that I use here is not a premium brand of paper. I believe the brand is Carson. It might even be a mixed media paper. So when I was trying to remove the tape from the paper, um, it tore a little bit, so the edge is not uh, clean and sharp enough, but it's not bad. I have tested this type of um, masking tape on premium type of uh, watercolor paper, and it worked like a charm. If you enjoy what you have seen so far, please click the subscribe button and follow me on Instagram. For my next YouTube video, I will show you how I made a watercolor reference chart with very clean, sharp edges for my Sakura watercolor traveling set. Please stay tuned. Hopefully, I'll see you there again. Thanks for watching. Bye.